Shout out to all the fluffy slippers out there for keeping our feet nice and warm, baby dolls. What's going on with the Pulse Chain, Pulse X, and Hex ecosystem coins? Why aren't they moving? Why aren't they pumping? Is it dead? Is it all over? Yes, it's all over. Just joking, okay, friends? Our friendship is never over. I think I found the answer. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Corrupt SEC, Richard Hart, Ponzi, scam, trash, not relevant, nothing's cool. Those are wrong answers. The real answer is if you've been listening carefully to my videos that you like and subscribe to and keep you straight back to it for, I've been saying a bit of a controversial truth. And the truth is that Hex is not a Bitcoin competitor like what I originally thought or what you originally thought. It's not really in the store of value competition. <clears throat> well, the market doesn't perceive it like that. The truth is that Hex is in the DeFi character. Okay? It is the DeFi sector. That's the elements that the market seems to be looking at it. And it makes sense to me because Hex offers native trustless yield. It's doing the money application of Bitcoin on Ethereum as an ERC20, and now it's on Pulse Chain. There is a community around there, okay? It has game theory. It is, you know, proof of weight and it removes all the miners, electricity. It's very forward thinking, okay? One thing I know about Richard Hart as well is he's very forward thinking when it comes to trends. So he could see in 2018, 2019, he could see DeFi before DeFi came out. And he thought, well, let me take the biggest application out there I can think of, which is Bitcoin, and let's like make it DeFi, okay? And that's exactly what happened. Now, I can sit here and just talk about it, but I'm gonna show you a chart because before I even thought of this chart, friends, I'm gonna give you some nice juicy angel music. You see, first I had the theory and I thought, let me go and check the DeFi Pulse Index. And before I checked it, I said, if my theory is correct, this index should be crashed on the floor, okay? And have a look at this, friends. We're gonna have a look at it. Let me show you the index. You see that? Not moving, down. All right, now this index has a lot of poop coins in there. It's got like Uni, Curve, Synthetics, Useless Governance Tokens, Aave, okay? And you know, we all joke about Useless Governance Tokens, but they're the most used protocols in Ethereum, okay? Aave is doing billions of dollars of money locked, Curve, all the stable coins, the DEXs, Uniswap. So really, friends, we already know. I joke that about their, I joke about the useless governance tokens, but truly at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, okay? The market's smart, network effects. The market knows, okay, we're going to value you high even though you're a useless governance token because you are associated with that network, okay? And so this is super important to navigate when we look forward. All right, so... <clears throat> This is why I ask, okay, what's going on with the ecosystem? So as you can see, right, for example, the Pulse Chain ecosystem is just not reacting to everything going up. But, you know, this is my answer for it. So I truly believe that what's actually happening is Hex is a DeFi coin, not a store of value. Now, you might say, is that good or bad? Very good question. Let's think about it another way. Store of value narrative is a very, very old narrative, okay? Bitcoin has the store of value narrative. That's all it does, store of value, okay? Only store of value, nothing else. Okay? It doesn't have payments, doesn't have smart contracts, doesn't have nothing, just store of value. It's now in its fourth cycle. So you don't actually wanna be a store of value coin. You don't want that to be that, okay? You want to be something else because Bitcoin going into cycle number four makes it very tough to reinvent the wheel. In fact, you can't reinvent the wheel. Okay, now Bitcoin Maxis will tell you, don't worry, we are definitely going to flip gold. Okay, well, good luck to you. Okay, hopefully Roca Negra doesn't end up scamming everyone like I expect at 80, 100, 120K with the big fat minus 70% correction from that point. Okay, so here's the thing. Hex offers native trustless yield and elements of a store of value like Bitcoin did 
but as an ERC-20 contract. Okay, now here's the thing, okay. The whole DeFi sector is not moving up, only Chainlink. So me, I don't know, friends, I'll just call it luck, fluke shot, okay. I looked at all the DeFi coins. I looked at Bitcoin, Ethereum, and everything in the top 10, top 20. I'm like, man, I don't really know which layer one coin is going to win. I'll tell you that Chainlink seems to be the chosen one from Swift and the bug eaters. So I want to go heavy in that. That's my core allocation, okay? Now, when it comes to that, it fortunately for me worked out. Chainlink does a triple X, right? A three X, nothing else moves, okay? So I got that one right and like in a big way, okay? I'm still holding. And hopefully that's a sign of better things to come. But the rest of the market is not reacting. So we're sitting here in Pulse Chain, Pulse X and Hex. And you're thinking, well, it's over, it's over. Well, what I did was I went and looked at Aave and Synthetics and Curve and Uni. And they're not moving either. The whole index is down. None of that DeFi is moving. Now, it, it's scary because we all believe, well, you know, they should come back. They're, they're the biggest protocols, man. But do they have to? I don't know, friends. I don't know. Like this, we're praying that they do. It's crazy how this works because crypto gaming as a sector reversed first. <laughs> but it, this is it, the game's tough. Okay, so DeFi was a thing in 2020, and it's still down. Okay, so it's had more time capitulation. Crypto gaming erupts in 2021, and it starts reversing already. So crypto gaming started later and it's reversing earlier. But this is just the mind of the market. You can't predict these. This is just up to chance, okay? And you never really know truly what's coming around the corner. So let's read this next part together. So I just want to remind you, I did look at other coins as well. So not just Hex, right? I said, well, what about Aave, Uni, Synthetics, Curve, and others? And it's the same boat. So I'm going to show you right now, for example, like Aave chart. And this isn't the full Aave chart, but just to show you, like, it's all ravaged as well. Like, they're just not reacting, right? So don't worry about They're just literally dead. Like, can't make higher highs, just dead, 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 dead. Now, when do they recover? I don't know. Do they recover? I don't know either, friends. Not a financial advisor. Literally, I wrestle crocodiles part-time, sit in a very dusty room, sitting on a squeaky chair. We don't know. We're just guessing. The good thing is, though, if you have this thesis that DeFi is a thing and it's not going away and it will keep growing bigger and Chainlink will keep unlocking it, right? The good thing is you have a cult with Hex, with Pulse Chain, with PulseX, okay? So remember, PulseX is a DEX. It has a buy and burn. That to me, like, if you're doubting Hex, I can see it's scary because you're like, wait a minute, what are we? There's an identity crisis. And now there's two coins. I understand that. But to me, you can't doubt PulseX, for example, because we know it's one of the biggest use cases of crypto, the DEX, okay? It's one of the greatest inventions we ever put. It's so simple. It was the real DeFi, the Uniswap V2. And it, it's so simple. And the, the functions and how everything works, amazing. And now you have a buy and burn. So the economic activity from the consumers and users of the product gets routed to going and making your share of the network more scarce every time there's a trade. That's the buy and burn happening. And now there's 2.92% of PulseX uh, permanently bought off the market from the non-origin address uh, supply. So it's, it's huge, right? But I mean, looking at this, this is Aave, friends. Aave, <laughs> why are you down here? So look, it's COPE, friends. That's why the title of this video you're going to see is this COPE. You always question yourself, but man, like, Aave is one of the biggest protocols. And look, I don't even have to like guess here with you, friends. I can actually go to you. If you go to DeFiLama.com, you just go to overview, right? Go to the top, click on overview. And look at Aave, friends, this is literally the entire crypto. Aave has, this is just a joke here. Aave has number four in all of crypto. Now, you know, this is just Lend. This is just Justin Sun's fake Tron USDT. You know, look at this, look at the fees. Look, you can see... <laughs> This is a joke. Okay, look at this. I'm going to show you right now. Justin Sun apparently has $6 billion there, but the fees generated is $12,000. Okay, the fees generated. Revenue is $1,000. That's disgusting. That, that's how you know something dodgy is going on. With like They just locked a lot of minted coins or whatever it is. Okay, look at Aave, for example. Aave making $714,000 a day. Okay, so you can actually see this square here, okay? Both of them have six billion locked up. Now look at this, make a DAO, friends. See make a DAO, that's locking up the DAI, eight billion. And this is Lido DAO, which is locking up the ETH. So you can see, man, it's no small feat to have that. 
Now, also, look at this. Uniswap has 4 billion locked up here. So I'm just telling you, look, this is DeFi. This, it makes no sense. Aave, 6 billion, number four in all of crypto. Number five is Uniswap. All right, you also have Compound, is also trash, 2 billion here. Didn't even know that. Curve, another 2 billion. Like, you're like, what, what on earth is going on? It's just, this is just how markets work. That's it. Remember I told you, they kick you in the nuts and then you ask them to stop. Then you start getting slapped in the face. Then they kick you in the nuts again. They bend you over. Chick comes out wearing stilettos, steps in your nuts, gets the hot candle wax, pours on your nipples. You know what I mean? You're like, where does it stop? Where does it stop, lady? I haven't got sexually excited once. Stop hitting me. I'm bleeding. Okay? So these are the types of things you just go through in markets. <laughs> you're a bit sadistic. You just sit through this, okay? And you're watching everybody else party, right? And you're wondering what's going on. So I'll be honest with you. You know, friends, me, I'm me, I'm a fighter, okay? I don't sugarcoat anything. I'll tell you the truth because I tell myself the truth every day. If this was cope, I'd be joking about it. I'm like, yeah, we're just making it up. It's just going to zero. But no, like, I presented evidence here. <laughs> Clearly, there's something going on with this DeFi category. It just hasn't woken up. Why? We don't know. Okay, We, we just don't know why, okay? Because you can put out your theories here and there, but it is what it is, right? That's It's funny. I mean, I, I coined the term Hex is real DeFi. So is Porsche and so is Pulsex. You know, we're, we're in the DeFi sector, right? So we've been in the DeFi sector the whole time. We are DeFi, which is funny enough. And it's the cult. It's undervalued, super cheap. No one knows what's going on. But I'm seeing the frustration with Ethereum and normies out there, friends. They're looking at they're looking at Aave. They're looking at synthetics. They're like, why are you guys just you not doing anything, right? So they're frustrated too. Everybody's frustrated with that. But what can I tell you? Maybe they start moving in Bitcoin halvening year, friends. It's just been a long time. I hope it does because it's been a long, long, long time, right? That DeFi sector has just been ravaged for a long time, since August 2020, when you think about it, okay? So continuing back here, right, just being honest with you, right, so I don't know if it's true, but you can get a feel for all of these, okay? So, you know, I mentioned here, it does make sense. Richard Hart's very forward-looking when it comes to these. DeFi sector's lagging. There's these just governance coins, okay? But remember, it's all about Metcalf's law. The market's going to speculate anyway, right? So even though Uni is a useless governance coin, there's going to be people out there, they're like, I like Uniswap. It's so cool. It's pink logo. And they're going to have a lot of money and they're just going to buy it up because they know, yeah, you, you guys are going to do something in the future, right? Like, we joke about it, but just let me tell you something. What can you do with a Tesla share right now? What can you do with it? Nothing. You can't vote to get Elon out. You can't vote to change the color of the Cybertruck. You can't do anything. You've got to, you got to sit there and Elon says, we're going to go to Mars, man. We're going to go all the way to Mars and you're going to be fornicating with all the green Martian alien ladies. And you just got to believe it. You just got to hope that everybody keeps pumping the bags, right? So at the end of the day, that's really where you're at. You're playing this game, okay? And game speculation and these things take different turns. It is what it is. I'm just telling you right now, wouldn't it be funny we can look back at this video and I'm like, wow, here I am saying, what on earth is going on? And trust me, friends. If we do start going up, you think all these people are going to say it's obvious? Of course they are. But are they long now? No, they're not. Okay. No, of these people are long now. Okay. If we start actually moving up, you know, if we start moving up from here and DeFi versus Ethereum starts going up, they're all going to pretend like they were in, but we're here, man. We're going to report to you live. They're buying Snow Theme, Trash Chain, Avalanche, and it's trash coins with the insider meme coins. They're buying Soylana, it's a trash ecosystem. Literally, while Mikey Novogratz is dumping on them via OTC, they're just buying the tops of everything. They're getting bonked, did 60x in like a week, and now they're telling me that's the future of finance. It's just all of these things are happening. We we know here, we know. Okay, so we're trying to get into the ground floor for other stuff. And hey, maybe it just takes longer. So I'm hoping this just gives you some more market perspective. So as we can see, right, the market is not hungry for it. Maybe we get a new shift, right? Now, just to remind you, okay, so. We're presented with this i want you to know this is normal in markets this is not this is not unforeseen never happen and things do eventually turn around you just don't know how much they turn around or when right how long it takes now i just want to repeat to you as well they're just probabilities okay it's, i want certainty so do you we just don't know okay like it looks feels like all right DeFi is now a cycle two narrative okay cycle two you have Ethereum EVMs, 
as well. Part of that DeFi narrative part coming into cycle twos. So that's why we have Pulse Chain. Okay, that's why I like collecting Pulse Chain. Just me. Okay, you also have Dexes, and Dexes are now going into cycle two. Okay, as well as part of the DeFi category. That's Pulsex. Okay, now that's why I'm overweight Pulse and Pulsex compared to Hex. Still have Hex in there. Okay, so <clears throat> you can do whatever you want. Um, just presenting this information to you. Maybe they all come out and surprise us eventually. We're just waiting and seeing. And look, I'm not nervous at all because it's it's not even Bitcoin halvening yet. And look, friends, before I then came on Twitter or the YouTubes, I spent hours and hours and hours going through the charts. And let me tell you what I saw, okay? I literally, I remember my conclusion. I was like, wow. You had, I'd go to December of many years and I'd go, wow, in this December, you had absolutely no idea what was coming next. Nothing. It was December like 2019, December 2015, right? The year before the Bitcoin halvening. And I'm like, man, you had no idea that all you had to do was like buy these coins and they just go freaking up only. Okay. Because they never gave you the hint that they would be good in the year before Bitcoin halvening. That's our year right now. So we're moving into 2024. So I'm not nervous. There's no cause for concern. Cheap prices are cheap prices. It's my margin of safety, right? Like you, uh, just a lot of people, they're like, oh, it, it's down, therefore it's bad. Well, no, it's down, it's still cheap, okay? The good thing is, what I like is, you're going to see this too, okay? If we swing up with the market and the market gets a bit euphoric, I feel happy knowing that when we come back down, you're going to get a higher low. You're almost guaranteed of that. Or it's going to be very short-lived dump because you've just been rinsing out hands for a long time. Think about this, right? So you're like, you, we've rinsed so many weak hands for like a year and a half. Imagine like Bitcoin thrushes up to 48K, then back down to 35. Like the, if you're selling your Pulse Chain, Pulse X and Hex when Bitcoin goes from 48 to 35, and you're like, bro, like you held through Richard's twerking and then the Pulse Chain delay and then the crappy launch and then the, the fake display of the yield farm and all the bugs and and then Richard and the corrupt this is it. Like you held through 15 bad things and now you want to give up? And what you can see is in the charts, the prices will be looking very, very strong when you get there on average, okay? So it is what it is, okay? I'm going to still keep collecting. I like it. It's my margin of safety. But yeah, I hope I shed some light here for you. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, norm. Catch you very soon, friends.